Okay, it's your boy Right Guys back with another Right Guys video, the home of common sense, truth, and funny. You know, the model become exceptional or suffer. So, today I'm reacting to this Just Pearly Things times John Zerka interview. If y'all don't know John Zerka, he's becoming a more well known internet celebrity influencer right now. He's kind of is affiliated with the Sneak Yo's, Aiden Ross's, Fresh and Fit, etc. The list goes on. Uh, he talks about dating, game, and be, he also be pushing Christianity in his own interesting, edgy way. Uh, then we got just pearly things, the more famous right-wing conservative talk show host. Basically, she has like a talk show, right? Where she just like convinces hosts to stop being whores and convinces men to stop being simps because that's what's fucking up society, man. So she'll bring like a bunch of ladies to her panel or to her show rather and so it's just like black pill them to the reality of society. And same with men too sometimes. She's been on Piers Morgan most notably. Real cool gal. Some call her the female Andrew Tate. Now they sat down together, had a cool conversation. But what I wanted to highlight and what I thought was really interesting is Pearl had asked John how he came to Christianity. And John's answer was pretty cool to me. He was like, so he just wanted to understand how the ruling class had so much power. What did they do to attain all the power that they have? What he realized was that all the elites, all the ruling class, all of them practice occult sciences. And that entails having to do things such as rituals and sacrifices. Some strange things sometimes. He realized that all these occult sciences, they manipulate Christianity or they invert it or they use some of the symbolism. And that's what led him back to Christianity. Like the fact that these people within the occult sciences use Christianity, but in their own inverted way. And that, in that, in his mind, legitimized Christianity, like the religion in general. So that, I thought that was really interesting. I'm going to just play the video so y'all can see. So why, like, how did you find Catholicism? Was it like, were you watching a stream or like what? I was like obsessed with God, death and all this stuff since 14, but I would remain an atheist up until 24 years old. Then when my best friend died, I felt very alone. So I'm like, do I want to live the rest of my life as a fucking nihilist? Mm -hmm. Or should I cling on to spirituality? Even if it's just a fashion statement, even if it's like, you know, Andrew Tate's fashion statement of Islam right now, I'm like, fuck it, whatever. Just keep my mind away from that void. Do you think it's a fashion statement for him? Well, for his is an ethnic shield. But yeah, for most people, like think of Andrew and Tristan Tate. Mm -hmm. If Tristan was a real Christian, wouldn't he try and convert Andrew? He doesn't even care. He's like, well, my brother's a Muslim and I'm a Christian. It's this is not a fucking video game. We're yeah. talking about life and death, hell or heaven. So like I can't have one phone call with any of my family members without me going from funny to trying to convert them. Mm -hmm. But they'll have phone calls with every family member and they'll never try and convert to mm -hmm. Islam or Christianity because they don't give a fuck. They don't even believe this shit. Okay, two things here. One, I'm gonna start with Andrew Tate. A lot of people in Andrew State started pushing Islam. They were just confused as to why he went to Islam. They weren't really deeply questioning it, but there was a other demographic of people, maybe who were more perceptive, who believed it was some sort of political move for him to align himself with Islam so he'd have some sort of shield against the left who were trying to cancel him at the time. So that's what like a contingent of people were believing, that this man does not actually fuck with Islam. He's just using it, like Zerka said, as an ethnic shield so he can have a base that will back him up against the rabid absurd left that was trying to cancel him and is and it still is to some regard still now trying to cancel him he's still dealing with that legal case in romania but my opinion is i can see why people say that yeah it would make sense for him to align with the muslims as a ethnic shield uh against the left but to be honest we don't know that man's intention we don't know What's in his mind? What's his actual line of thinking or his intention? So it's kind of out of our place to say that he just did it for political reasons, even though you could argue on the, on the surface it could possibly look like that. But ultimately, we don't know why he did that. Second, he's trying to equate kind of like the number of people somebody converts to a religion is the defining factor in how religious they are. I don't agree with that. I don't feel like Proselytization, the act of trying to convert people to your religion, defines how religious somebody is. That's not everybody's thing. 
Yeah, a lot of Christians are famous for that, especially like Jehovah's Witnesses. Have you ever been into the store? Jehovah, uh, a Jehovah Witness just comes up to you and it just tells you Jesus loves you or just tells you like to open the Bible with her and read. It's a really creepy feeling and your defenses just go up immediately. And I don't know, sometimes it just feels weird, the energy. But in my opinion, like the best way to persuade someone or influence someone to join your particular religion or ideology is to inspire them through your own actions. You should live a life so well or inspiring that it in it compels people to join your religion. I feel like that's the best way, honestly, is through your exhibited practice, the practices that you exhibit in front of other people rather than just trying to like convert somebody in a discussion or debate whenever you get the chance to. That just seems like overbearing and inappropriate at times, kind of my opinion to try and just convert everybody you see on the street type of shit i just rather and if i was to do that i just i would just pick trying to inspire people through my own actions and hey what do you do like, that would make people ask questions like what are your beliefs man how do you behave like this like what leads you and then you can tell people that way but that's just my opinion let's continue but yeah so after my best friend's death i was like let's try my first prayer and it worked it was so vivid and accurate and i was in the shower and i'm like do i do this and stuff <laughs> and but i wouldn't say the name jesus i couldn't say it but i was just watching those speakers corner jesus debates i was always rooting for jesus but when i read the quran it made way more sense to me i was like oh three wives because a man has a high sex drive so i was more into the quran but you know i always wanted the christians to win the debate and then after a year and a half of just you know i'm i'm I don't want another prayer of mine to come true. Like I already asked for one to go viral, right? First, I want my family and friends healthy and safe. And then if you could just help me, help me out by the sweat of my brow, just help me with what I'm doing. And it was to go viral on YouTube because I didn't want to work at nightclubs anymore. And so I tried praying and it was so accurate and it worked. And I was having crazy visions of me. There's this blonde next to me and her face is blurry. And then that was my first collaboration. It was like 9,000 viewers with some e-girl. I was like, whoa. And I'd be in her room in shock that I'm like, whoa, I had so many of these visions two weeks ago. And for a year, I had a, had visions with that girl, which is very scary to me. And I always and had that was this... when you went viral with her. Yeah, yeah. And then I tried reading the Bible. I said, this is not for me. This is not, this is fairy tale. But I was obsessed with Marina Abramovich billionaires and why you know jay-z and all of them do those kind of black magic ceremonies they or do. super bowl ceremonies or all that y'all don't know marina e uh, abramovich she is an artist that went famous for using pig blood like throwing it on walls and just writing sentences out and billionaires just threw money at her for that it could be argued that that's demonic i mean she came out on a new york times article and said yo i'm not a satanist i'm just an artist but if you use pig blood to write demonic sentences people are going to call you a satanist like one of her image uh pieces of art read cut the left middle finger deep and eat the pain and it was just written in pig's blood all types of strange occult symbolism this lady has made and billionaires just throw money at her so that is who marina abramovich is yeah. And I was obsessed with basically the whole world believes black magic is real, but not Jesus. I was like, that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. If they're like inverting a cross, to like spiritually charge a sigil, then what the fuck is the cross? It's got to be some truth to it. So I went and read about, you know, I'm obsessed with power. I read all this free Masonic literature of the people, the, the ruling class. Because I was like, whether they're brown, Chinese, Jewish, white, they all have one thing in common. They don't go to a church. They go to this temple called the Masonic Lodge. And I'm like, what do you study there? And then after I read all these Masonic books, they're just reverse engineering Christianity. So just as soon as I finished reading evil, it just brought me back to the cross. I was like, okay, I guess I'm with Jesus. So you basically wanted to know how they got power. And you basically found out. I was like, why? Him. Why are they doing art? Like, why Marina Abramovich? Pearl did not get a sponsorship from Microsoft for $150 million. But Marina got one. Who's, just, who's that? She does pig blood art. You've probably seen her. She just grabs pig blood 
and splats it on a white wall mm -hmm. and billionaires just DM her. I'm like, how come Pearl doesn't get a Microsoft Bill Gates sponsorship, but Marina Abramovich does, this girl who claims she's like a witch and does spirit looking. And then I kept looking at these artists and I'm like, how is this garbage art being fun? Why can't I get a hundred million dollar sponsor? Mm -hmm. How the fuck is she doing it? Or a billionaire sponsor like Microsoft? And then it was always that occult sciences, black magic, occult science everywhere. Or the guy who invented rocket technology, mm -hmm. again, occult sciences. He says it's all from working with demons and shit in his books. Rocket the, technology? Yeah, the Jack Parsons. I don't know who that is. When you look at Jack Parsons, he's doing weird sex magic rituals with like nine other girls to have these psychic visions to be able to understand rocket technology better. And then... When I look into Tesla, it always linked up with that three, six, nine, all the numbers linked to Freemasonic numbers. And then all of this would go back to Egypt, which is in our dollar bill, right? The eye of Providence uh, on, our, on our dollar bill. And I'm like, every single culture since ancient times knows about occult science and black magic. And they all worship the serpent. And Christianity talks about the serpent is the tempter. Right. And a lot of people, like Christian Gnostics will say the serpent is actually just a penis tempting you to sin, which is, a, there's a strong argument for that because children don't kill themselves, teenagers do. What's the difference from a child and a teenager? Mm -hmm. Is they get sexual, and that's the difference. That when the penis starts talking, they're now, oh my God, I love that girl in high school, I'm gonna kill myself for her, I'm gonna drink bleach. Children never do that because they're not sexual. Yeah. So a lot of people say it's, the serpent's just the penis. And then we go back to the G in Freemasonry. That's generative principle. Like Sigmund Freud talked about, all sexual energy. Everything comes from sexual energy. And the more I read about this stuff, they would, on certain zodiac alignment dates, this is how Egyptians would do it. They would wait till like the clock strikes at 8 p.m. on a certain date to have that electric, etheric orgasm with their partner to manifest wealth. So they'll choose on a Day like eight because eight is the money frequency mm -hmm. and i was like what the fuck all sex is ritualistic that makes way more sense than what i'm taught in high school which is in high school they just say sex is like a handshake save it for marriage but it's just no sex is like this is why people get jealous and stab each other for just like some one night hoe is that's true man like in school today contemporary school society bro they don't teach you like the actual significance behind sex they don't teach you like the deep spiritual meanings behind it they just like he said explain it as if it's just sort of frivolous casual handshake that you can just do with no repercussions whatsoever man but i feel like that's what society needs to hear more of that sex is a big deal actually energetically philosophically spiritually and the people that you engage with have some sort of effect on you and vice versa and that should be bared in mind before you partake in such actions, you know? You know? Have some responsibility, you know? Believe there are consequences to your actions. Not everything is just a handshake, like he's saying. That's deep. It's like there's, it's like a soul tie. Sex is like a soul tie. So the more I read this stuff, all religions seemed like garbage, and it kept coming back to the cross, and I'm like, holy shit. I still remember. So it has to be true because the evil people essentially are, they're doing the opposite of Christianity. Yeah. Okay. They're this. negating it. And what's scary is in their highest authority, let's say Albert Pike, he says, I think page three, two, one, they don't actually reject Christ. They acknowledge he's God. Mm -hmm. The evil bad guys say he's God. They Wait, just... I think you said Albert Pike. Albert Pike is like, he was, um, a confederate general and also a high-ranking freemason back in the day so that who's that's who albert pike was say there's a second authority so it's a yin and yang they try in like the 1800s uh, 50, 50. That era. and so i'm like whoa even the most evil people on earth they still want to be with jesus like hillary clinton she's evil but she still will say she won't say jesus is not real you know behind closed doors she would never say that but she'll just say, like, sometimes you can use Jesus, sometimes you can use Lucifer. Well, I was even thinking, uh, I tweeted this the other day. I was like, <laughs> why? Because there's so much, like, anti-white stuff now. 
you know, and I don't really anti-white, anti-straight white male is yeah. just attack on Christianity. Yeah, they're they're masking it. It's kind of the same thing Kanye said. He said there's an attack on Christianity. They mask it as an anti-white attack, but it's really just attack on Christianity and the fundamental values and beliefs that have led society up to this point, man. It's just like they're trying to negate everything and erase all the borders and parameters so there's some sort of like global hegemony that exists. Scary. It's just another attack on the cross. Yeah. Um, and the and I was thinking about Black Pride or like, you know, because you'd always have like those black groups on campus at, at like um I can't remember, but like the black student union. And I was thinking about how you couldn't have like a white student union or white pride. And I mean, you th you think that all this sort of racial thinking we come would become outdated by now, but unfortunately not. And we're still just as tribalistic as we were in the past, if not more, arguably, right? And so, yeah, we still have things like black unions, white unions, purple, brown unions. It is... Ultimately, it's pretty stupid, bro. We're still just arguing on the basis of race. Like, until we can see the humanity in each other, there's so much... Like Kanye said, like so many other p smart people said, like, the real war is not about race. It's about class. But the elites prop it up and frame it as some sort of race war to cause this racial tension and to distract you from the real way they're fucking you over, which is through class, through how much money you earn. That's the real s separation that's happening out here. And I don't know, I was, um, and, I, and then I started thinking about how pride's a sin anyway. So why would you want it? Yeah. Oh, you mean for like a racial group? Well, I was just thinking about pride in general, like even because my first thought was like, why can you do black pride, but not white pride? But then I was thinking like, isn't that a sin anyway? Pride? Yeah. Well, I'm a Catholic because unlike other religions, a Filipino Catholic sitting next to I kind of want to answer that. I feel like you can do black pride because in America, because of America's history, black people has been propped up to be victims and white people has been propped up to be looked at as the oppressor. So naturally, black people are going to create some sort of like central unions and it's not going to be deemed with so much vitriol or or prejudice because these people are looked at as being victimized instead of white people. So essentially, it doesn't look bad when black people make ethno supremacist groups because when white people attacks them, it looks like they're punching down instead of like punching up. And when black people create some sort of ethnocentric group, it appears as if they're punching up instead of punching down because in America, historically, they have been oppressed right and they're still being oppressed right so i think that's why it looks like that why it's more acceptable in america for there to be a black ethno group instead of a white ethno group because of america's history ku klux klan slavery etc i'm not saying that it's still right fundamentally and i'm not saying it's wrong it's just it is what it is really so white catholic they're on the same level yeah. But it would be better if, like I was saying before, we could do without race at this point and stop having that be the main focal point or issue. No skin difference, but try and say that to a Saudi and an African Muslim. The Saudi thinks he's so much above. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. I don't know much about. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you've been around, like, every religion is very racial except Catholicism. We're a Filipino Catholic and a white Catholic. They're pretty much on the same level when they talk to God. This is really true. I grew up in a Muslim family, yo. And what he's saying about the Arabs and like the African Muslims or any other racial sort of Muslims is so true, man. Like the Arabs just look down on anybody who's Muslim and not Arab. I'm not saying all of them, of course. I'm not trying to make a vast generalization, even though I'd say... Of course, there's uh, some of them who are pretty cool, humble, and do not see themselves as above you, but a lot of them do, man. And it, I feel like that's it. not how it is in Christianity, like he was saying. Like, you can have a Filipino Christian and a motherfucking Italian Christian, and they're going to be on the same level. They're not going to be looking at each other with some sort of, like, racial lens. But in Islam, bro, you go to, like, the Middle East, 
These people treat black people like shit, bro. A lot of them do. And just not black people, any other, like, race. You could be, like, motherfucking Malaysian. And you go to fucking Saudi Arabia. They gonna... You gonna see some racism, bro. They're good. They kind of... It's just patronizing. They're like, oh, so cute. You want to be a Muslim like us? But we conquered your land and made you guys Muslim. You want to be Muslim like us? Oh, that's so cute. But I don't know. Instead of, like, Christians, they're not... They're not like that. I've noticed. That's so... What he's saying is true. But why I think... Uh... Why I think Jesus game should be represented and led by white people is because they held the cross closest to their heart. They defended it the longest. What the fuck? So what is he saying right now? <laughs> they should like they proved what? themselves throughout history. He's he's kind of making it sound like the Muslim thing I just said right now by saying the uh, the white Christians were the ones who had the cross most close to their heart. Come on, man. That, that's that, that's so inaccurate. That's so inaccurate, man. You can't you can't say that. You basically propping it up to be like how the Muslims are, kind of. Come on, man. I just defended that whole point. Now you're trying to throw that shit away. I don't think that's true. I think that you can see, like I said, a Malaysian Christian or an Ethiopian Christian be just as religious as an Italian catholic if not more you can't really base a, somebody's really religiosity on the skin color they have but yeah everyone else kind of like scattered because at one point all four wings of the earth were christian so chinese really lost their way at really? one point they said i don't chinese believe that christian. i don't believe that all corners of the earth are christian ever maybe like the majority but never the whole entire i don't think the whole entire earth was ever one religion so, so I I didn't think that was true though. I thought there was like other religions before that, like and I don't know, but um of course there was other like, religions before. Aren't there some like ancient like caveman type stuff? No. Well, I don't buy into any of that. I don't buy into dinosaurs. I don't buy into. Uh... You see, this is where I feel like he's being disingenuous because modern day religion stems from ancient antiquity and spirituality. That humans had in the past, people humans used to be like an, animist. What they believe is that believe that's the word. Like like they believe there is an inherent divinity within the rocks, within the water, within the dirt, and then religion or spirit spirituality became more conceptualized or more mentally abstract, and like instead of there being divinity within everything or whatever, like within every piece of nature, divinity became projected as something out or external that you push your energy towards or that you submit to. So, yeah, modern day religion just evolved from ancient spirituality that humans had back in the day. It wasn't just like Christianity just came down. Christianity is kind of just like this amalgamation of everything, all the spirituality of the past it's just everything evolves, man. So, yeah, I don't... Everything is borrowed, too. So, Christianity is just, like, an evolved form of human spiritualities of the past. Every modern religion is like that. It's all borrowed from the past. Uh, Lucy. You know Lucy? Like, the first... La or the last common ancestor between ape and man? Mm -hmm. She's named Lucy because it's, like, another play on words. It's Lucifer. I mean, they lie to us about so much stuff. I don't really know, but... <laughs> Evolution has been... Thoroughly debunked. Like, and when it came out, everyone laughed at Darwin. Think about all those geniuses laughing at him. Um, the Bible is closer to describing human nature and the problem of evil and temptation, way closer than evolution. That evolution is so fucking stupid when you dig into it. You, just look at intermediary species, they don't exist. So, like, when, true. when a fucking. That's true. Uh, Whale is turning into a land mammal with legs. There should be millions and billions of bones in between them. Of yep. like oh yeah, the legs. Yeah. Were, there's none. So it's uh -huh. like it's actually hilarious because they're like, if you're seeing small adaptations of. I've heard that that evolution and all these dinosaur bones that they dig up is just a psyop to make you be not believe in Christianity or religion. It's just some sort of like global psyop to make people disbelieve in religion because they believe that they show them the evidence of evolution that it, it will inherently discount Christianity or religion or God. But yeah, 
what he's saying is like a very good point. You don't see the intermediary bones of the animals that were in the middle between this animal and that animal. For example, humans, we still haven't like found a missing link or whatever. Or even from like motherfucking, I feel like I could use dogs to wolves. You don't see like the intermediary link or even whales. It's like he's saying, bro. You just see the end result. Oh, this was an animal that used to live in the past. That was this animal before it became this animal. But where's like the intermediary specimens, dog? Why you feel like you lying to me, dog? Over time, there should be so many different uh, variations. And so evolution's just retarded. And another thing is like, like what do they say now? They're like, you have, you share 90% DNA with a chimp, but 70% DNA with a banana. Like they just fuck with you. They tell us that scientists say that shit. That a human and a banana are very close. And it's like what the well, fuck? Well, but you've seen what they've done. You know, it's you know COVID what science. You know when yeah. they talk about chimpanzees and humans, it's the same thing as COVID science. It's bullshit. Well, and honestly, the stuff they've done with global warming has made me like not trust any scientist ever. It because... started from global cooling. Global warming, yeah. and then they're like, fuck it, let's call it climate change. Yeah. They just gave up. Like, Yo, Candace older. Owens was saying the same thing on the Bill Maher podcast. She was just like, Bill Maher was trying to convince her on the validity of global warming, and she just came with straight facts, dog. She was just like, yo, okay, so first y'all called it global warming. Now y'all calling it climate change. Now you're calling it, like, global cooling. Like, what, yo, pick one. What's going on now? Like, global warming has basically been discredited in the mainstream, People don't even really talk about it anymore. Now it's kind of, now it's referred to as climate change or whatever. But there's just so much evidence as to the Earth always changing climates, never having one specific climate. The Earth has always been changing climates since the fucking history of Earth, dog. So, yeah. Global warming. I don't know, man. I don't know. The dumbest shit. Or when they say, from carbon dating, we found one bubble. <laughs> and it's telling us that this fossil is 68 million years old from a fucking bubble? Yeah. Really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Does anyone buy that shit? Well, even all the stuff they teach us about, like, women, like, that's what I know the most about, like, women's suffrage history. And they lie. They, and, and even the women's studies departments in schools, what they'll do is they'll literally rewrite history. And yeah. they'll always say the same thing, like, I know better than the people at the time. So, like, we know, like, and I think that's the biggest mistake humans make. They always think that they're smarter than the people 100 years ago. And I think we're dumber, actually. No, they say this is the best time to live in right now. Don't, no revolution, please. You are living in the best time ever. I'm like, what? The highest depression, anxiety, and despair? And I'm born in the best time because there's an iPhone on my hand? True, man. Started. And I don't even think technology makes humans that much happier. I think that's a big hope. Like, that's a huge lie. Imagine having a ton, ton of iPads and iPhones and no girlfriend or wife. The fuck are you going to do in this apartment? Yeah. You know, how do, they, they try and feed us that technology made our lives great and shit. Mm -hmm. No, it didn't. It actually made you like a fucking rat, rat in a wheel. Well, and the problem is now if you don't adapt to technology, you get left behind in a way. Yep. Like, let's just say you're a kid and you don't have social media. You go to school, that's what everyone's talking about. I believe there was a Joe Rogan episode where he kind of talked about this. I don't think Elon Musk was on that particular episode. I think it was somebody else. But anyway, they were talking about Neuralink. And he was saying, yo, once Neuralink comes, the separation or the advancement or the advantage that other people are going to have with people who don't have Neuralink is going to be tremendous, astronomical. And what, what she's saying is totally true, bro. It's like, and it's scary to think about, like, once Neuralink, Neuralink is a real thing that Elon Musk is working on. It's basically just having a phone inside your mind. You'll be able to read minds. You'll be able to stream the Internet, browse the Internet, just do shit within your mind technologically, which just sounds crazy and cool at the same time. But it's going to create a gap within society, man. The way I think about it first, it's going to be the elites that have this. It's just going to be there's going to be like a gateway to the price. I feel like it's going to think this thing is going to be so expensive that normal people won't be able to afford it so it's going to be all the elites have it first and that's just going to create a gap within society people who have Neuralink and people who don't have Neuralink and the people who do have Neuralink are going to be tremendously in an advantageous position to the people that don't and it's going to be like bro you can't even compete with these people it's like competing with gods at this point man scary potential reality we could find ourselves in y'all 
Yeah. You're just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I always say, I'm like, it doesn't matter how good your parenting is. In high school, you lost your kids to the state. And the state is whatever fucking parties is happening in high school. Sad. It's like, you cannot raise children in this environment. It's impossible. Well, yeah, yeah you can't man. protect them from the culture. I have um, a cousin. I remember, man, my grandpa, my parents from Gambia, West Africa, and my grandpa had came over, bro, and he, he was just observing the the society basically man and he was just like looking at the youth and he was just culture shock bro because our morals and our values and our principles are just so off base from what they are in other third world countries which are more family oriented and have god at their apex value and he was just looking at the youth and seeing all this degeneracy around him and he was just like man it's not that the youth are fucked up here it's the environment that they're raised in and the propaganda that they're being introduced to and inculcated with that's leading them down this fucked up road. And so it's not like the youth is just inherently bad over here. It's just like the programming that we feed them that's just leading them astray. I thought that was really interesting. You know what's so funny? I have this uncle, he's an Orthodox. Like, um, you know how the Catholics switched a bunch of stuff in like the 70s? You know that? Okay. You, you, like, they used to not have female altar girls, and then they let female oh, altar right, girls. Oh, right, right, in the 1970s. Yeah, 60. I don't remember the exact year. My uncle goes to, like, one of the churches in Latin. Like, Latin before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so they don't believe in any, like, the changes or whatever. He homeschooled his children. And really, he's, like, 50-50. I don't know if they're liberal or conservative. One of his um, sons actually... One of his sons got involved in, like, a throuple and moved to, like, Oregon. A three-people couple? And these are homeschooled kids. Damn. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to offset the effects of our current fucked-up reality, man. You can try to protect your kids. You can even homeschool them, and they still go end up in a throuple, man. What the fuck? That's sad. Oh, that's funny as hell, man. You see, there's, there's even precautions you can take. Not everybody is going to be saved, bro. As you, you can see, her uncles homeschooled the kids, try to prevent them from the mass indoctrination of the Matrix, but the son still ended up in a thoughtful man, a three-way couple, what type of satanic shit. But yeah, man, that, that's funny as hell. I ain't gonna lie. You know, and I have, it's so funny, I have a cousin, that's my age, she was like a virgin on her wedding day, got married, like she did everything right, but it's, it's, you know, she's still 50-50 on the kids in the household, yeah. and this is a guy that, lit, I thought he was so crazy when I was a kid, I swear, and then I got older and I'm like, oh my god, he was right, <laughs> he was right about everything. <laughs> Mainstream media always wins the kids over. Yeah. They always yeah. submit to that Kim Kardashian. What it seems like. Stuff. That's why I think I'm so good, because I'm like. I'm like a rock star bringing Christianity. No one's ever done that. Mm -hmm. Who's done that? Who Who do you know who's brought Christianity in like a in an entertainment format? I don't know why Beyonce isn't she a Christian? That's a Satanist. That is Beyonce. Hmm. Evil human. Beyonce and Jay Z are pure evil. Exactly. Yeah, they work with the Clintons. Yeah. Look at Pearl's face. <laughs> She's just like, who do I have on my podcast? Oh, I don't. I don't know. Unless you're gonna interview. <laughs> are you in talks with her? No. <laughs> I hate when I mention and or if I no. should talk a name and then you somehow know them, right? Like I remember I was gonna critique Kanye once, and my team said, "Hey, we're talking to Kanye. We're trying to get a Zerka interview with Kanye." You're so, gonna critique Kanye? I was gonna make some funny joke, and they're like, "You should ease up on the jokes. At least meet him first. Yeah. And that never happened. So okay, so what are the like? Masonic, like, cult things that you're talking about? I was right. Nick Fuentes, Ryan Dawson, all of them were wrong. And I like Nick. You remember our problems, me and you were there. It was right. me yelling Oh, at yeah. But yeah, all You were really annoying that stream, though. Yeah, was, was, <laughs> we were trying to have, like, a real conversation. You just kept screaming. But check it out. I was right. They all laughed when I said the final war will be Zionists and Muslims, and then they'll had this LGBT Luciferian agenda. And I, this is, a, I quote mine is from Albert Pike. And I posted on Twitter when I got laughed at by all these intellectuals. And now I thought it would happen in a few years, but now look what's happening on TV. I reposted the tweet and everyone is bowing to my feet that I was right. I predicted this. So 
when Nick was studying who's the, who's the powerful elite, his prediction was not accurate. Um, Brian Dawson's predictions weren't accurate. They were saying the right stuff, but there was no predictions. Me, 100% correct in my prediction way too early. I didn't know it would start within this month. So when I retweeted that, I was like, holy shit. I'm the only one. Stu- I'm the Here, only one. You, I'm the only one studying the real shit. If Nick and Dawson were studying Freemasonry, they would have been able to predict it like me. But they laughed it off and said it's nothing. It's stupid. Okay. So what? What did you? Sorry. Explain that more. What you predict? Because at the time, I just didn't know what you were talking well, I, about. I didn't. I didn't do shit. The Pope of Freemasonry. Okay. Albert that's Biden. what I'm about to say, bro. It's like I don't think he really predicted this. This isn't like religious scripture. Within the Bible, I believe is that the final war is going to be between. Jews and Muslims, or whatever. So I was like, Jericho, why are you taking credit for this, man? You taking credit for the Bible, dog? You mad blaspheming right now, G. He's the Grand Wizard, pretty much the general. He wrote Morals and Dogma, this book I read, and um, and he predicted, to his letters to someone, he predicted three world wars. They were very accurate, and the third one, he said, will be between Zionists and Muslims, but both will lose, he said. Because there would be so much bloodshed on both sides. And then they implement this Luciferian utopia, which what I think that is, is that pride LGBT shit worldwide they're going to do. But the point I'm making is because Nick and Dawson did not study Freemasonry, they didn't read his prediction. They didn't. They said his prediction is just an old man, whatever. I posted the prediction, his prediction, and I was 100% correct. So now I think those two and everyone who studies power and who rules us they should start with the freemasons because now it's not just a club if they're predicting stuff this accurate they're more than a club right so i think if freemasons uh the jesuits the liberal jesuits in the vatican this is the ruling class the top of the top of the top of the top everyone laughed at me who's laughing and they're the like satan worshipers yeah they're luciferians so they have like the cult splits into two left hand, right hand path of like Luciferian or Satanist, sun or moon. So the Luciferians run on emotion. So they have high anxiety and stuff. They have an obsession with stimulation. So those are kind of like, think of your meth heads, mm-hmm. but they enjoy doing evil in in that intense way, in, in, in a way where it's like ritualistic. And the Satanists enjoy evil in a chaotic way, where it's, mm-hmm. it's not that, um, it's not on this date, on they're more carnage, destroy everything. Mm-hmm. But it's the same fucking group of evil, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like two, think of two ruling families. So I think what he's saying is like, Luciferian Satanism is like more calculated and methodol- method- methodological, how you fucking say it? Method- methodological. <laughs> and then left hand Satanism is just more anarchist and they just want to inflict carnage. It's not organized. That's interesting. The fuck? Families, and one's more evil than the other, but they're both fucking disgusting. Okay, and so the two, they predicted that... Well, Pike predicted it. The the top authority of Freemasonry. Okay. And are they public or no? Well, it wasn't meant for the public, but we have these books. They're so hard to read, and they're veiled in allegory and stuff, so no one can actually decipher these books. But his notes were not meant to be public and it, or excuse me his letters and his letters predicted the two world wars and then that islamic zionist final war he called it the and then what's what's going to happen is that like the end of times or something uh they just say that they're going to implement a new system because they say when there's enough bloodshed mm-hmm. people adopt they humans need to adopt a religion when there's too much blood and is that like the rockefellers are they part of that yeah i mean that's like stuff Alex Jones talks about, but like, I, I just talk about uh, the Jesuits in the Catholic Church as the top of the pyramid and anything linked to Freemasonry. Okay. So, no, because I know I know that a lot of um, I was just talking to someone about this. Like their thinking is they want to make like they want to get rid of all the differences. So like the man and woman difference, and I don't. I don't know if it's the Rockefellers or some other big family, but I guess there's these big families that are like liberal and they want to get rid of the gender differences. They want to get rid of all the religion differences. They want to get rid of all the races. 
and just make everything into one. Yeah. And does this coincide? I feel with like I was saying, yeah, like the communist super state where they abolish private property and everyone's identical. Yeah. 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 And it's like a techno. It's it's gonna come. A technocracy as a gift to us. Yeah. Yeah. Be like here's your new super. You will eat the bugs and you will have no property and you will fucking love it. Isn't that the messaging from the, what they call them, the global, the, the GBE? I don't know. I know George Soros like runs that shit, right? But that's supposedly the new world order that they're trying to coordinate, man. That everybody's going to be the same thing. Nobody, there's going to be no private property. And you're going to love it. Scary, fuck that. We ain't, we, ain't, we ain't going for that, man. We're not going for that. Do you think they'll, do you think they'll win? Yeah. No. You do too. Everyone does. No. Look, look what they did with a car. Yeah. I know, right? So, is there any, like, hope? Or is it over? That's why I'm here. Oh, that's, that's why the CIA put me in here. A comedian. I'm just a comedian. But no, at, at the end of the day, God wins. It's like, this is just the material suffering. Yeah. Because, like, look at it like this. We're given paradise. The feminine, Eve, Mm -hmm. says, I want more, and bites. God's punishment comes down to hit her and Adam, and then God, being the most merciful, sends his only begotten son to conquer death and save us from sin. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, we're already saved. We're with Jesus. But are we going to see a lot of fuck shit in this material world from these kind of governments? Oh, yeah. It's going to get bad. But I, I'm, I'm optimistic because, like, I don't I don't believe in Jesus as, like, a profile picture. Like, I, I hear him. You hear him? It's like you're conscious. When you do something good, you hear yeah. you feel the Holy Spirit. You know, it's really interesting because I think a lot about how different of a time, because how you're 30, 29, so I'm 26, and I feel like an internet kind of came when I was in high school, like smartphones, or like when I was in eighth grade, I got my first smartphone, it kind of got big when I was in high school, and I, I think about how the interactions between men and women are so different, Um, you know. Oh, you mean post-digital age, like. Yeah. Like, even I was thinking about, I was watching, like, some, like, pictures and videos from, like, the 20s, and people are, like, you go out to a club, and people are, like, twirling around, like, dance. Like, it's very different now. I feel like men and women, I actually am going to predict that the next generation of women is going to have less sex than ever. Actually, I think women are going to get less slutty. Really? Yeah. Um, I think people are going to, it's going to be like Japan, where people just stop talking to each other altogether. But the end, they'll be losing to robots. Yeah. Well, I think I think women will still be like attentive. But I was looking up, so I went to this um this like event thing, and it was like the first time I'd been out in like forever. And I was, it was like there was like a dance floor, and no one was on it, right? And all the men were like on one side, and all the women were on the other. And then there's a couple people talking in the middle. But I was thinking, I'm like, it's not like anyone's going to hook up after this. You know, because I was like, if, if they do, it'll be like maybe those five over there. I'm like, I bet you the next generation is just going to be antisocial. Yeah, like Kinda awkward like, as fuck. Like, you see it in the Zoomers, right? Yeah. When, when I, yeah. Anytime I see, like, my nephews and stuff, I go, whoa, they're acting so weird. Yeah. I didn't act like that at that age. Yeah, so I actually, I think you're going to see, like, it, they just stop talking to each other because there's such a cost now even for men to just, like, talk to women. Like, I just watched a video of a guy that got... He was um, approaching women for interviews, and he was told he was harassing women. He wasn't even asking for anything sexual. So it's like... If he's harassing women, what am I doing? <laughs> uh, hey, I'm going to just end it there, y'all. This is a really dope discussion. Y'all can go watch the whole thing. It's like only two hours. But yeah, I just wanted to highlight that brief segment right there, what they was talking about. As you can see, John Zerker, really interesting dude, man. And his philosophy is pretty dope. And our thinking aligns in a lot of ways, but just separates in a few different ways. But I think he's needed in the space, man, because nobody else in this streamer influencer world talks like this. Nobody else brings up God, Jesus, Christianity, the Bible, family, tradition, culture. So 
I, I feel like, like he's more of a service to the culture than if it if he wasn't in the culture. I feel like it's better for us to for him to be in the culture basically than to not be because nobody else is talking like him. Nobody else brings the talking points, and just the same for Pearl too. Pearl's just as needed in this space as John Zerka because these are the people. These are like the right figures that we got right now in entertainment that can speak to the millennials, the Gen Z, the Zoomers. And kind of just try and save them, really, because that's what's needed amongst all this degeneracy out here. So, yeah, I just love this discussion. His philosophy is really cool. Like I said, our thinking aligns in a lot of ways of just diverses in a few. And what he was saying about cult sciences was pretty cool to me, too, about how all the ruling class use it. And once he saw that they were just basically reverse engineering Christianity, it just led him back to Christianity and a believer. I thought that was pretty cool. And how he recognized that all the celebrities, the influencers, these people in power, powerful positions, he saw the patterns, the symbology, the numbers that they used, and it led him back to a lot of free Masonic literature, which led him to the cult science and back to Christianity. And Pearl was just like being a cool ass dope interviewer, asking the good questions also, just kind of like nodding her head, even though some of the shit might have seemed out there, she could still kind of like comprehend and understand what the guy was saying so overall i love this interview and let me know what y'all think in the comments man uh do you think john zirka's just dog shit crazy or was there was there any validity to the things that they were saying so let me know if y'all enjoyed this just as much as i did please like and subscribe y'all can send topics y'all want me to cover to big man builder 100 at gmail.com send anything there you want me to check out and yeah thanks for watching y'all right guys out